Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you here. The energy in the room is so high and what a great way to enter into worship today. If you're worshiping with us online, I want to extend a special word of welcome to you. Becky Bond is there online with you. I encourage you to check in on the chat with one another. You, whether you're watching this today live or another day during the week, you're an important part of this worshiping community. And so we hope that you check in and with one another and um, you're welcome to share any prayer, joys, and concerns there, um, or you can email those into the church, um, and we'll take care of that. If you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary, it's good to see you this morning. Um, we have a great day ahead. We're going to get to hear um, from our youth from their mission trip um, a little bit later, and um, they did some great work this week, and just so impressed, and I know it's great to see them here with us. Um, if you have not already grabbed one, um, the bulletins are back in the back. Uh, there is a place to register your attendance. Um, if you'll take a moment to do that, and then you can place that in the offering plate. A lot of people have grabbed their new name tags off the table back um, in the back of the, uh, or in the foyer. Um, so we're seeing lots of new name tags, which is fun and great. If you would like one, you can check your name on here. Um, if yours isn't there for some reason, Cindy said, go ahead and just write it down or re-register and she'll make sure that we get it. So there's a place on there to do that. On the back, there's a place to share any prayer, joys, or concerns, and you get to decide the level to which you would like that shared. So um, you will also notice that you have an actual order of worship on the bulletin this week. Who are my, like, need to know that people? <laughs> yeah, so I know we have some of those, and so um, we have um, adjusted the bulletin a little bit to, to do that. Of course, now that means we've got to stay on task, so <laughs> we'll work on that. Um, it's a great day to worship our God. And as we come in and take a moment just to kind of settle in where we are, I invite you, just take a deep breath in, to breathe in God's Holy Spirit, to breathe out all those things that keep us from centering ourselves on God this morning. We breathe in God's goodness and light. We breathe out those distractions so that we can worship. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this beautiful day, for this opportunity to come together and worship you, whether we are in this sanctuary or in our homes or on vacation and online. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will come and move among us. Open our eyes, open our ears, to what you have to say to us this day. We pray all of this in the name of the Christ. Amen. Good morning, Couts. I invite you to stand with me for Honey in the Rock. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you got. There's honey in the rock. Praying for miracles, praying for a miracle, thirsty for the living well. Only you can satisfy Sweetness at the mercy seat Now I've tasted in the heart of steel Only you can satisfy There's honey in the rock, water in the snow And on the ground no matter where I go I don't need to worry now that I know Everything I need you got there
week was the first time we had sung that as a congregation. You're doing great. So um, I'm going to invite you um, to join me with a call to worship, except it looks like our screens are having some issues. And so I'm going to just have you reply with, come let us worship our creator um, after each phrase I give. Come let us worship God. Come let us worship our creator. Hold on, we might get it. There we go. God is the great sower, scattering seeds of life and abundance across the earth. We are the soil the sower plants, created to nurture and sustain the seeds of God's life-giving love. God is the great gardener, tilling and cultivating our soil with love and grace. We notice the rocks and thorns in our soil and call on the gardener's love and grace to transform us into good soil. God is the great life giver, sowing seeds and tending the soil to produce the fruit of abundant life. May we nurture and grow God's new reality, bearing the fruit of flourishing and abundance for all God's creation. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship our Creator. And let us just take a moment to say good morning to those near you. You don't need to go on a hike around the sanctuary, um, but specifically those who you may not know. You 
to follow along in your Bibles. The scripture for today comes from Matthew 13, 1 through 9, and 18, verse 23. Or, I'm sorry, Matthew 13, 1 through 9, and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. As he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on a path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, for they did not have much soil, and they sprung up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. You have ears here. And to, then to skip to verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. 
When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the, on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of this age and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. May God add God's blessing to the reading and hearing of the word. Thanks be to God. I'm inviting Luke Loa up um, to come and share a little bit about our mission, their mission trip. Any youth who want to come stand with them, you're welcome to do that. Hello. <laughs> All righty. Howdy. If you don't already know my name, my name is Luke. I've been a part of youth for seven years, and I've been participating in this church since I can remember. I've been on multiple mission trips during my time in youth, going as far as Corpus or staying close and helping out our local community. With this being my last mission trip as a youth, saying it was a blast is an understatement. Some say working in above 100 degree weather is unfavorable, but with the group I was paired with, it was far from that. Despite the hard, harsh conditions, our group prevailed with happy smiles and great spirits. We left the comforts of our home to help another in need, strengthening our bonds as a team and with Christ along the way, bringing us closer to him through service. We made a friend along the way too, Miss Teresa, the 81-year-old woman who had no help taming her yard. On breaks, the team would have conversations with her and she even knew some of our names. After a long, hard, after a long hot trip, Still in great spirits and many Taylor Swift songs later, we would end up finishing her yard, giving the power back to her and her dog. My favorite times on the trip were on the, were the Van Rots QT, singing very loudly on the work site, and the shenanigans that went on, uh, were going on throughout the trip. Oh, and seeing Wyatt's cot disappear, and Nelson's high burst of energy. <laughs> I enjoyed the company of the people I've been going to church with the past couple of years, for they are truly the greatest group of friends I'll ever have and they will push me in my future endeavors as I will them. This troop was our last time together as youth. I've grown to, lo to know and love, even though I'm looking forward to new service opportunities in the next chapter with Christ, which begins very soon. Thank you, Luke. We really appreciate you sharing um, a little bit of your story we get the opportunity to hear um, just what these opportunities mean to our students um, in their own relationship as they're growing in their relationship with Christ. Through our giving, we give these opportunities. That is what we do. I mean, it's not money that just stays here and sits in a bank and just keeps growing. We don't do that. We give it. We use it to be in mission and ministry in this community, and also um, beyond this community, and we invest in our students and our children um, to help them have these opportunities to grow. And so as we give our offering today, our tithes, our gifts, um, let us give generously, remembering that we give out of our gratitude to God for all God does for us. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, Receive these gifts, our tithes and our offerings, and transform them into mission and ministry in this world. We give you thanks for all the work our youth did this week, along with the adults who joined them and helped make that happen. Thank you for working in and through them. We pray all this in Christ's holy name. Amen.
invite you to stand with me for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. to invite the children forward for the children's message. so you're not hidden? Where are you wanting to hide? That's maybe okay too, right? There you go. All right, so does anybody know what a seed does? It's pretty easy. Grow. Very good. So that's right. A seed grows, right? A seed can maybe be a tree or a flower, or a plant, or a watermelon, that's right. Cucumber, tomatoes, food, corn, that's right. So what does a seed need to grow? Austin, you kind of said it already, but you can say it again. Water, the sun, air, what about, one more thing, soil, right? That's right. Soil is the ground that a seed grows in. Jesus told a story about the wrong types of soil, so let's read it together again. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things and parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depths of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. So this story is called a parable. Because although it talks about seeds, it's really giving us a message. What do you think it's trying to say? Austin? Um, the, good soil is the, the good soil is the healthiest, right? Very good. Anybody else? Is it talking about our faith? Asher? That's right. The soil is important because it helps the seed grow, right? So are we seeds? Do you think that we as people are seeds? And what are we trying to grow? Our faith, right? Our faith in God's love, Jesus Christ, right? We're the believers, right? He wants us to grow in our faith. So we've talked a lot about growing in our faith, some things that we can do to help us grow. Coming to church, praying, reading our Bible, surrounding ourselves with other Christians are those things that will help us grow and always learning. You aren't, you're not ever going to know everything in the Bible. Do you think Pastor Holly knows every single thing in the Bible? No. Do we? No. That's why we keep coming to church and worshiping, right? So we can keep learning and gaining knowledge to grow our seed. We're the seed. We're going to grow our faith, right? And then one day we'll be into God's kingdom with God, right? We grow. We're people, right? You guys are kids, so you're growing. That's right. All right. Are you ready to pray with me? Human being, yes. That's right. 
Good morning, God. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the cloud coverage. We thank you for seeds. We thank you for soil. We thank you for water. We thank you for light, God. We pray that we grow as Christians, that we can surround ourselves with Christ-like people, that we can come to worship, we can read our Bibles, and grow in our faith. God, we love you. Thank you for all the wonderful things you give us each and every day. In your name we pray, amen. Those ways that we grow deeper is through prayer and our time with God. And so I invite you to join me as we go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come before you this day, giving thanks and praise for all that you are, all that you have created, all the many ways that you are at work in this world that sometimes we forget to open our eyes to, open our ears to, or open our hearts to. And so, God, in the silence of this moment, we offer our own silent words of praise. God, there are times when we forget. When we forget your love for us, when we forget your love for others. When we want to judge others' soil without looking at our own. God, we seek your forgiveness for all of those ways that we separate ourselves from you, for all the ways we separate ourselves from one another. God, this day we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the rain that quenches even just a little bit of the topsoil. We give you thanks for this place to gather. We give you thanks for the work our youth have done this past week. We give you thanks for all the many ways that you are at work through couch, through this world, through each and every one of us. God, we share with you our thanks and praise. But God, in the midst of all of our thanks and praise, we are so well aware of the need in our world. God, this day we pray for those whose soil is completely dried and they face famine at, at, for no reason of their own. We pray for those who are in the midst of war, in the midst of danger, wherever that might be. God, we lift up to you those within our own community of faith who are struggling this day, for those who are home-centered, who, who may feel that disconnection. God, we lift them to you. We lift to you all the joy, the concerns on our hearts. Thank you, God, for hearing. 
Thank you, God, for listening. We offer all of these in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During this time, I invite you forward. The altar is open for prayer. to make a quick announcement. This week, Staff Parish Relations Committee met and um, met with Levi and voted to make him the permanent worship leader. So we have taken interim off of his name. <laughs> we are so blessed by the gifts that he brings along with the gifts of all of our musicians. And so we are so thankful for that. You know, I sat down several times this past week to try and write the message for today, and I just kept hitting a roadblock. 
If you have been in church for any time at all, you who read the Gospels, any Gospel, you have heard or read the story that we read today, often known as the parable of the sower. And the thing is, Jesus even tells us toward the end what it means. So what am I going to say up against Jesus' words, right? It's kind of like Easter Sunday. Everybody's heard it all. What more do I have to say? But then, as often happens, when I spend time in the Scripture, something else just popped out at me that I hadn't really paid attention to before. Verse 3, And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. Verse 9, Let anyone with ears listen. Verse 18, Hear, then, the parable of the sower. And I thought to myself, how many times have I read or heard the scripture, but have I truly listened? Have I really heard God's message in it? Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we long to hear your word for us this day. We open our ears and we open our hearts to listen. Speak to us through these words and in spite of them, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I love to dabble in gardening. I'm not saying I'm a gardener. I like to dabble, okay? One of my favorite things, and one of the things that's probably most dangerous to our family budget, is me going and walking through plant nurseries. Because I see all the beautiful flowers and I want them all, no matter what they are, right? And I, I imagine my dream garden where, where all the butterflies come and the hummingbirds come without having to hang a feeder. I love looking at some of my old favorites, daisies are one of them, um, caladiums and, and lantana and salvia and hostas and things that bloom and then others just some great green things. And I love discovering new ones and wondering, ooh, I wonder if this will work for me, if I can make this one grow. And I've slowly been working in the flower beds at the parsonage seeing what plants are already there and, and kind of making themselves known this spring. I was completely surprised by a whole section of the bed that had beautiful pink primroses, another one of my favorite wildflowers. And I go outside at different times of the day to see, okay, where's the sun shining that I can put things that need sun and, and where's the shade and how much sun and, and I kind of wander and look at that and I spend time figuring out, okay, which areas are going to get hit by the sprinklers and which aren't because, you know, I don't want to plant in the aren't because then I have to go out and water, yeah? So for many years living in apartments, I've pretty much limited myself to container gardening and container gardening is super easy, mostly, because all you got to do is take a pot and you take the soil that's already pre-mixed and has all the stuff in it. You might add a few rocks or some extra perlite if it needs, the plant needs some extra drainage. But it's all prepared and, and things just grow from there. But over the last 10 years or so, I've instead begun creating flower beds in the homes where I am or tending to the ones that are already there. And I'm now planting more perennials that are going to grow and last longer for years to come and and i've learned just how important soil preparation is i've attended a couple of classes i've read some books i've got neil sperry's book sitting on my bedside table i like to you know i know to figure out what kind of different soils different plants need but here's the deal i like to plant flowers that's what I like to do. I like to create pretty spaces. I'm way too impatient when it comes to preparing the soil. I don't know what it needs, if it needs nitrogen or not, and, and do we put too much or too little, and, and soil prep just isn't really very fun, is it? You know, you, get, you got, sometimes it's stinky, especially if you're having to work with the, with the compost or you're having to dig way far down and mix it all together and 
and it's hot and it's exhausting work and and sometimes you get in there and you discover that just a few inches under the surface there's there's rock or there's clay or or roots of trees you know i just want to plant my plants and have the pretty garden that everybody has in the magazines that's all i want Interestingly enough, my dad's profession is in soil nutrition. The gene I did not get. Hi, Dad. He watches. Jesus says, listen. The sower went out to sow. The truth is, how often do we read this scripture and think, oh, I'm so glad I'm not that shallow soil, or the rocky ground, or the weed patch, I'm here in church, I read my Bible, I pray. I'm not like those people over there where the seed falls and, and it gets eaten up or withered or choked out. Be honest, I can't be the only one that on my worst days make those judgments, right? And yet, the truth is we have been or we are all of these types of soils at different times. As one unknown author put it, there are times when I am like a beaten down path that can't accept another word, even a good word, even a word from the Lord. It just bounces off the hard surface of my weariness or my stubbornness waiting for a bird to come eat it. I know what it means to be that path. And yes, sometimes I am so shallow it startles even me. I take the easy route the unthinking, clenching route in mouth, something inane about the Word of God. And even though it might sound good at first, there isn't any depth to it. It doesn't sustain me or my hearers when things get difficult. I know what it is to be the rocky soil. Most often, however, she continues, I'm the weedy, thorny type. I've got so many tendrils running around, it's it's hard to even remember what's next. Going here and there, a calendar completely booked for weeks. I'm rushing off to do one thing or another, and then I forget the whys and the wherefores. Even the good word gets choked out of me and busyness. I know what it means to be theory soil. But once in a while, she says, by the grace of God, I can find the space, find the depth, find the growing time to let God's word take root in me and begin to show some fruit I know what it means to be good soil. And I love that. You see, here's the thing. The same patch of dirt, the soil, can be all these things if they're not maintained. It can be packed down, beaten down, so that nothing can penetrate it if it's not turned over regularly. You can pour a bag of good soil on top of it. But unless it gets worked in there, once the roots get through that very thin top layer, they don't have any place to go. If we don't tend, if we don't pay attention to the soil, how quickly those weeds start growing, right? Weeding's no fun. So I wonder what this looks like for you. Where and how are you tending your life with God? Where are you creating space so that the roots can grow deeper? Is it through spiritual disciplines, such as reading scripture or prayer, journaling, serving, simply creating space to ponder? On Thursday, I got to go down and spend time with our youth. Of course, I showed up at the very end, so I, you know, apparently timed it really well or badly, but they were finishing up a little bit early than they had expected, and so um, we just kind of hung out a little bit, and that evening I got to sit and be led by our youth in worship. I had zero responsibility other than to just sit there and participate, and I got to hear their stories. Luke talked about Miss Teresa, whose house and needs were a bit overwhelming, I believe, and how this group worked hard to clear brush and cleaning up the yard. And it, even more than that, each of the students, as Luke talked, got to sit down and talk with Miss Teresa, get to know Miss Teresa a little bit, 
to listen to her, to receive a blessing from her at the end of their time together. Now, for many, that could just be some other work day. You know, I go, I do the job, and I leave, and that's fine. But as I sat there in worship, and the students answered this question, where did you see God at work this week? The work that they did grew new roots. And I was reminded that as we go throughout our day, whatever we are doing, we have hundreds of opportunities to pause and let something take root in us. If we let it, if the soil is prepared for it, and reflecting on how God might have been in a conversation that we had or, or something that we read that planted a seed. Sometimes if our soil has been tended, a simple word from a person or an encounter with an unexpected person begins to take root. Have you had those experiences? One person in our congregation was at a funeral not too long ago of a dear loved one and, and hearing the stories of how he had lived his life planted a seed within her that she wants to cultivate and help grow a ministry with our home-centered folks to help keep them connected, to know that they are loved even when they can't physically be here. Conversations with others has helped this to grow a little bit, to take root, and it's our hope that a new caring ministry will soon launch. There's a person in our congregation who is now working in our nursery with Miss Shelia. I'll just name her. It's Shelby Bishop. Hi, Shelby. She's in the nursery watching too. She has all these ideas, and she's so excited. Today she brought a wagon full of things to, to share the stories of Jesus with our youngest children. Not just play, but help them to learn those grounding pieces of their faith. Out of conversations with a few other people and his love for today worship music, Levi has proposed a new monthly worship service once a month, the third, Wednesday, third Sunday of the month. It's simply a service of singing and prayer and reflection and communion. We're hoping to launch, we're planning to launch it this fall, maybe as early as September, most likely. And see what it goes. See, see what God does with it to help create space to tend our soil. These things are growing. They are taking root here at Couts. But were you listening? Did you hear? There are some things in this story that you may have heard, but you didn't understand as the early listeners did. It's not just about the soil. If it was just about the soil, we would be getting into that works versus grace conversation. This story also includes a sower who sows extravagantly. This sower doesn't just carefully plant one plant at a time. Seeds spill over into all the different kinds of places. And this would have been shocking to those early agrarians who were hearing this story, who lived what it was like to plant, to take those seeds that have been gleaned from previous years and clean them and store the seed. And, and, and here is this sower who just sows them recklessly all over the place on the path, on the rocky wastes, along the thorns. It's unheard of. It would have been such a shocking story to see the waste of all this seed. In a shame-blame culture where the righteousness of people was measured by their positions of power, prestige, and privilege, to even think that the Word of God could come to those who seem to be so easily overcome by the evil one or the cares of the world. That was a scandal. Do you hear the words of grace? No matter what your soil is looking like these days, the seeds of grace 
fall indiscriminately into the lives of all God's children. The outcome of that gracious sowing may, may not be immediately known. One never knows what might come of grace. Perhaps it's this. Perhaps it's this. Perhaps this. There's one more thing that you may have heard but not understood. Again, in this agrarian culture, a crop that does well, it might produce sevenfold. An amazing, unheard of year would produce about tenfold. But this seed that the sower is sowing bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. We worship a God of abundance. A God who can scatter a few seeds regardless of the soil and good things happen. And that is God's grace in our lives. We don't deserve it. We don't earn it. It's a bit reckless. And it's freely given. And yet, did you hear what happens when God's grace is partnered with that good soil? That soil that's been tended and fertilized. Soil that's been prepared to welcome that seed and give it space to grow roots. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. And so I wonder. I wonder how your soil is these days. I wonder what you do or what you might need to do to tend it. I wonder what seeds are being planted in you, what seeds are being planted in this church. I wonder what our grace-filled sower is up to these days. Amen. I invite Lorraine up to lead us as we stand for our affirmation of faith. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We're called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you are looking for a church home, a place where, you know what, some days our soil is phenomenal. Some days, eh, we're working on it, right? We're just real people here to, to learn and connect with God, to connect with one another, and to connect with God's purpose out in our world. We would love to welcome you to this congregation. Um, we, re we receive new members by transfer from another denomination, from another United Methodist Church, or by profession, profession of faith. For the first time. If this is you, you're welcome to come down during this closing song. Meet me down here. If you are just one of those people that, oh my gosh, I'm not going to the front of the sanctuary, that is okay. And you can talk with me following the service. Love to have that conversation with you or call me anytime during the week. Got another song about dirt. Yep. <laughs> Love songs about dirt. So let us sing together beautiful things.
said amen to that a couple of quick announcements before we finish up um just a reminder immediately following worship we'll take about a 10 minute break to reset um that we have a church conference um that is solely related to a piece of land that we have that we um, are looking to sell if you are a member of the church you have a vote if you're not sure if you were a member, um, Cindy's got the list and she's kind of running through that. Um, but if you were a member, if you'll kind of come forward, sit towards the front. If you are not a member um, and want to become a member, then let me know. Um, but uh, if you want to sit closer to the back, if you're interested in saying you're welcome to. I don't believe that this is going to be a real long meeting, um, but it is important that we all do it the way we need to do it. Um, our 60 plus group is walking again great on Mondays and Thursdays especially while it's um, hot outside the gym's open with little air condition so it's a great way to come and get exercise Missy Buchanan is coming this Saturday with our far 60 plus are you still taking reservations Dawn till tomorrow so if you have not seen that um, you can Think you may be able to sign up out there, but see Dawn, and she's happy to help with that. Um, the Ranger game, um, the youth are going, and anyone else who wants to go, um, Callie is closing that registration I mean, after worship. So she's here and taking care of that. You can meet us there if you want. It's a 1 o'clock day game this Wednesday. Um, August 13th, we have a blood drive. You don't have to be a church member um, to do the blood drive. So if you want to share that information with others, they can stop by um, and do that and sign up. And again, name tags if you haven't gotten one and would like one. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. There's a link in the email. There's all the things. So, um, yes. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that's it. Um, again, so following worship, we'll take a, about a five day, 10 minute break. Um, and um, we've got the resolution to share with you and we'll, we'll take care of that pretty quickly. We receive this benediction. Go forth from this place to teach as you have been taught, to serve as you have been served, and to love as you have been loved as a beloved child of God. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer. Amen. I think you're good.